This video is brought to you by StarCharge, the largest EV charging manufacturer in the world. They are also a provider of residential and commercial battery storage with microgrid solutions. Hello and welcome to another out of spec reviews video and a very exciting one because you join me standing next to yet again, a brand new refreshed, re-engineered Highland, however you want to call it, Tesla Model 3 performance. Now I've already taken you on a full tour of the standard car when it launched. We've already done initial testing on the LFP, you know, standard rear wheel drive version. We've driven the dual motor all wheel drive in our 10% challenge and have done some other things with that car. But today is the big one for me. I am a performance driving enthusiast and I am an electric vehicle enthusiast. And typically those things do not mix. The Tesla Model 3 Performance is one of the few cars that blends those two passions together better than almost any other car. I have, of course, owned and continue to own my 2019 Tesla Model 3 Performance, among other electric vehicles. And to this day, my old 150,000 mile Tesla Model 3 Performance is still the one I get into, and it makes me the most happy to drive. I love my Model 3 Performance and here is the new one. And in this video, I'm able to drive it with you for the first time. So big things I'm gonna be looking out for. Is it too soft? Is it too comfortable? Did they take the sportiness out or have they enhanced the sportiness and taken some of the comfort out? Are one of the compromises? How is it gonna drive on some Canyon roads? This is gonna be a very initial test, my very first impressions, essentially just a test drive here at our local Tesla showroom. I have to say a huge shout out to these guys in Superior, Colorado, because these are not officially available for test drives yet, but I just barged in and I think pulling up in the Cybertruck helped. I was like, they didn't know who we were. They're like, uh, I'm like, I got to drive this car. And they're like, okay, let me go talk to the manager. Here's the keys. Hell yeah. Model 3 Performance on the channel, our first drive. Let's do it. So let's walk through what we're dealing with here. Uh, the standard Model 3s, which actually I can show you just over here, uh, sit quite a bit higher than the um, performance. So these have some interesting uh, suspension changes compared to the previous car. The overall architecture stays the same, but there's a new damper on these, which is called a frequency response damper, or I, yeah, I guess that's probably the best way to describe it. That says basically certain inputs, the damper will react differently to other inputs. And it means that these actually have an incredible ride. They really take the ripple effect of the road and don't transfer that to the cabin. But still, when you get the car working and moving, it doesn't fall apart like a wet noodle. It still has some stiffness and some good character. And I've been very impressed with these cars. We've driven them in Europe and the US and uh, still just love how soft and comfortable and quiet they are compared to the previous cars, but still have this Model 3 lightweight sporting edge. But the new car, the new performance, this is where it gets dialed up. And now in the previous video that I did on this car, I walked you through all of the specifications, the numbers, the fact that the European cars make less power than the US cars because of different batteries. This is a US car, so it makes the full 500 and something horsepower. I have, I think it's 380 kilowatts. I forget what the horsepower is, but for, this is not going to be so much a statistics video as it is a driving impression video. If you want to know all the numbers and upgrades, information about the new Gen 4, I believe, the new permanent magnet motor on the rear axle, uh, we already have a video and I will leave that as the first thing linked in the description, the first video. Uh, notable things I'm looking at. Okay, braking package looks to be certainly bigger than the standard cars. Hard to tell if it's different than the previous gen. Seems to be carryover. Uh, and so that means there's plenty of upgrade ability with Model 3 and there will be plenty of aftermarket upgrades here. But actually Model 3 performance brakes are fine for most people for general enthusiast driving. 235 section tire up front. That'll be curious to see. It's a little bit small. It is a, let's take a look, a Pirelli OE tire with the noise thing on the inside. P0 Elect tire has the, yeah, the PNCS, which is their like foam on the inside. And uh, 235 might not be enough tire on the front. In the rear, I believe they run a, sta run a staggered setup. This is the new wheel, by the way, with uh, inserts here for aerodynamics. Maybe you can take those out for even better brake cooling. Jordan, we're, uh, yeah, now we're on a 275 30 mm -hmm. R20. So I wish it was 275 square. I like aftermarket. a square setup, but there's plenty of aftermarket. I'm just going to take a look at some of the nerd stuff in here. They recommend a 42 PSI 
front and rear, and there's only a 915 pound payload, which is actually better than I think my Model S. Teslas never have huge payloads, but 915 pounds is going to be plenty for this car. It says GVWR of, mm -mm -mm. don't know if it actually says that. Oh yeah, it does. GVWR 4974. So it's about 4,000 pounds. It's actually, yeah, just, just about 4,000 pounds on the nose unladen. That's pretty impressive. That's very impressive. Considering you have an almost 80 kilowatt hour battery pack, and by the way, this one will charge faster than the dual motor. Don't buy the dual motor new Model 3, Andreas. Don't buy, <laughs> Don't buy that. <laughs> buy either the base one or this one. This qualifies for the federal tax credit where the dual motor does not. So I know there's a lot of viewers, they always comment that don't qualify for the tax credit. So we don't always take it into all consideration in our reviews. But if you do, there are certain specifications of this car that you can keep it under the $55,000 maximum and get the $7,500 credit. And because I'm a nerd, I love the white seats in Teslas. I just think they look great. You can only get the white seats if you want to keep the tax credit with the gray, the base color exterior. But that is with today's pricing. As with Tesla, as this video ages into the future, pricing changes almost every other week. But these seats look incredible. They have a almost ludicrous like badge on the inside. We had speculated in early videos about this car that the Model 3 performance, this is going to be the base performance trim. And I have no reason to believe that Tesla would ever do this, but I have my fingers crossed that they will actually release a harder core, big tire, big brake, more power, maybe new battery chemistry, Model 3 ludicrous into the future. I think uh, this car is a nice evolution from the previous car in terms of specs on paper, and I'm expecting big things. I'm coming into this car with very high expectations, which is kind of a dangerous thing to always do. But, um, I do think there's room for maybe something even spicier into the future. So anyway, let's go for a drive, experience it for the first time together. The new upgraded Model 3 performance. Again, as a owner of the previous generation car, this is very exciting and I can't wait to see how the new car drives. So join me as we drive on B roads, normal roads, try some launch performance, try the driver assistance, look at the total vehicle comfort, and then we'll find some twisty roads in the canyon, go full track mode and give it a full rip. Well, it's happening. Finally. La last minute, we're in the car, in a new three performance, and like just have 30 minutes to do this. Thankfully, we live in Colorado and the mountains are right there. Right. So we're gonna head straight to a canyon and send it right. and just get a feel for it. Car's brand new, tire pressures aren't perfect. They're actually a bit high. Um, so if I come over here to service, you can see they're supposed to be 42 in the rear they are, they're 44 in the front, it's fine. We're close enough. Um, this is the new performance badge looking thing. We've got do 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 permanent magnet rear. This is the new motor, the old carryover induction system. Let's just run in here really quick and see if there's anything that we need to know about in service mode, which I don't think there will be. That all looks the same. That looks the same. We're not charging at the moment. Okay, um, power distribution looks the same. Coolant system, do, do, do. Alignment and tires, that's the same. Steering, okay, it's the Gen 4 E-Pass. That's the steering wheel stuff, brakes. Yeah, all, all the same as the standard car, nothing exciting here. Let's go drive it. So, in terms of setup, we're going to keep it on the street first. So I want to drive it like, you know, how I own a Model 3 Performance. We're shooting the intro after this, so I don't know. I'm sure I'll say all this. <laughs> but um, I daily drive my car. I road trip my car, but I also do track days. We go out for enthusiast drives, and it really has to be the one car to do everything. So the daily driving portion is honestly what I want to focus most of my time on, on the way to the all canyon. Through. Yeah, I was going to send it through the light <laughs> to get more time. But we're going to do this, and if we're a little bit late, Tesla can sue us later. Right. So no, a Cybertruck on the road. Cybertrucks are I everywhere. I saw three on the way here. Yeah, I saw three on and the I way here. I live 10 minutes from here. <laughs> yeah, they, they have completely taken over the Denver, Colorado area. <laughs> New Model 3s, not as much. No. I, I've seen a couple today, but that's like... I still get more excited when I see one now. Okay, the seats, Jordan. Let's talk about those. Are you dialed in? Have you set up your seat? Let, uh, me, let me have the camera. I'll show everyone much. how you're... How you're looking over here. You can get low. This is great. Yeah, you can sit not on the ground, but pretty low. Pretty low. 
I'm feeling, yep, I'm good. Can send it now. Oh, look, it's a cyber beast from Florida. Oh, that's my truck. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, who else has a How tri many people have spotted their own car? <laughs> <laughs> who took it? Alyssa, Andrea, someone. <laughs> Someone with an A name. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why they would leave. Okay, that's really funny. <laughs> so never mind. We're taking over Denver with cyber right. trucks. I don't know if that's ever happened. I spotted my own car. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to leave it charging. Anyway, um, new three performance. The wheel feels very similar to the standard car. Everything feels pretty standard to the, I mean, normal, common to the standard car, I should say. Same oh, white panel I don't like. Dude, I love it. Really? <laughs> what are you talking about? The white seats are the only way to go. Really? You I love so? the badge. I love this. I think these, this is great. What are you talking about? White on white? I, white on white, any color, honestly, with the white interior for me works in the new car. I'm pretty color agnostic. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I have gray with white interior on mine. And honestly, that's what I would probably suggest for the new three performance, because that is the only way to get the tax credit with the, at least with today's pricing, with this interior. Right. If you choose interior and color, you lose out on the tax credit. And if you don't qualify for the tax credit, well, then you choose whatever other color you want. Right. I don't like the buttons in the new three wheel. I much prefer the way Cybertruck does it and my Model S. These buttons, you have to like get right on the right points, which there's no indentation to say when you're touching the correct one and then push, but dude, that doesn't matter. All of that stuff is carry over from the dual motor. Suspension, I'm coming at it from, I just drove a brand new previous generation three performance. Yep. Night and day noise performance. <laughs> this car is so much quieter <laughs> and so much smoother. We could just road trip it right now. So this has adaptive damper now, I believe. Yes. I think what we need to do is we need to launch it. So we're in insane mode. We're gonna do a zero to 60. I'm just gonna, you know, we're gonna to have to break a couple traffic laws here because um, we are not. Allegedly. It's given the time properly to review the car. Tesla invites to review your cars. All right, so I think the best way to launch them is mat the throttle with every Tesla. Right. This doesn't have launch mode or anything. So ready, Jordan? Yep. Let's look ahead, keep an eye on the speedometer. So, which would be right here. Let's do a zero to 60. Ready? Go. Boogie's off the line. Nice. Yeah, gets right up there. Very nice sounding motors right? and conssistent power. And if I just roll into it, dude, it keeps pulling. So the other one, the dude, old one, didn't pull pulling. this well. <laughs> Whoa! You got to look that way so the viewers can see what we're up to. Not, they don't need to see me. The other, one, the other <laughs> one does not pull this well. That's fantastic. Whoa! At higher speed, especially. So I have a basically first gen Model 3 performance with yep. the small battery pack in there. Uh, they went to then the Gen 2, if you will, where they put the larger battery in there. That's like Drew and Colton's 3. And they were pretty much identical in acceleration, even with the mileage difference. We did a video drag racing a 100,000 mile Model 3 performance against a brand new one, and they were neck and neck. After a few runs, though, mine started to slow down a little bit more, resistive pack, things like that. This pulls hard at high speed compared right. to those cars. My car is really fast to 60 and then bleh, yeah. the like 100 to 130 in my car takes forever. <laughs> Not that that is a real problem for me. I don't really drive fast on the street, but when I'm on track, I'm like, come on, let's go, let's rip. And wow, you roll into this thing and it just pulls and pulls. So I'm betting in the brakes just a little bit, trying to get some heat in them because I'd like to do uh, an 80 to zero, if that's okay, Jordan. Say so we have 250 miles on the clock on this one. Right, so a break in period. <laughs> All right, so here's 80 miles an hour, ready for a full break. No one's behind us. Ready? Yep. Three, two, one, stand on them. Had a little bit of front knock up there, but man, it the brake pedal felt good, got good ABS feedback, and it was just tire limited. Right. So it could use, look, so uh, object in road, ESP does the typical Tesla like overactive thing, um, but it feels light. So. In my head, I just drove the Ionic 5N on track and on road. And to me, it was like, okay, that car costs $18,000 more than this car, plus or minus 15 grand more. Um, and it doesn't get the tax credit. Yep. This does. And to me, this kind of seems like the deal of the century. 
This feels much more track ready. I mean, the Ionic 5N is an SUV. I actually would basically. disagree with that. I think the Ionic 5N feels more special, feels way firmer, big brakes. Did you feel that weight more? Because that's a solid thousand pounds more. Yeah, it's a thousand pounds more, and that's what I was gonna say. This turns just in that initial thing. This is like light on its feet in comparison. And you know, it's the same weight basically as a new M3. I've, I've been a previous BMW M3 owner mm -hmm. uh, and enthusiast. I'm a huge combustion M3 guy, love them and other vehicles uh, that are sort of you know, manual transmission, enjoyable cars. I still think this is a car that doesn't encourage you to drive quickly, isn't, you know, an enthusiast uh, weekend blaster, if you will, yeah. but it is the one car to have in the garage that can do it all. Right. And that's what I've loved so much about my Model 3 performance is I can go on a cruise road trip. I can put it on FSD beta if it wants to go. There we go. And it can do this too super well. More Holy smokes. Better than most cars. <laughs> the, the split character of what this vehicle can do, which is be literally the best daily driver. Better than any Tesla Model 3s, I think. I fit best in them. They're so nimble. They're so quick to squeeze through traffic. And then you can dial up track mode, which we'll try out in a little bit, and you can absolutely rip it. That is a cool, unique thing. I'm also noticing this one has the new software compared to my Model 3. I'm just really impressed with these dampers. Yeah, so I want to talk a bit about that. The suspension is amazing right? from a comfort standpoint. Yep. Um, is that going to hamper it on the performance side? We're going to find out because being adaptive damper, when it goes track mode, it should dial it up a little bit more. But one thing I will say is we are not giving up, or I should say we're gaining a lot more on-road comfort compared to the previous one. Yeah. You've spent a lot of time. Well, I have KWs on my Model 3, so you can't compare it to mine. But I've, I drove yours before the KWs. Yes. And this just does feel a bit more comfortable. So what settings, the one thing that's always been annoying about Tesla, and I have to complain about it, is I can't get into track mode while I'm driving. I've gotten really good at doing park, track mode, this, drive. <laughs> <laughs> which doesn't slow you down too much. <laughs> I even have like a little sexy button, yeah. uh, which are like the really cool things you can plug into your Tesla and it unlocks a bunch of features. I have that behind my screen so I can go park, button, drive. Yep. And with the stock, I can do it much quicker than, than this. So it has a drift preset, a race preset, add new profile, out of spec create profile so we want slight oversteer we want reduce there we don't need post drive cooling and we don't need to save laps my guess different than the previous track mode also let's get this out of here you have brake temperature motor temperature battery temperature motor temperature and brakes on the rear so it's even different than the cyber truck situation i don't know what this is indicating you have the telltale that esp has been reduced but this is the cool thing with this car. This is like a daily driver car, and then you can just dial in exactly how you want it to feel and everything. In the old car, you used to have to go neutral to actually get most power out of it. I mean, it would give oversteer, but this was more of a balance. It would still give you power if you were full one way or the other on both motors. But they were always, we've done some track tests and we've talked to some experts as well. They were always a bit faster if you left it 50-50. But I just, want to tell if this, I'm not here to drift it around on public roads. Instantly, you can tell the suspension has firmed up. Yep. Does it give you much suspension control or is it just deciding? I think it's just deciding based off we're in track mode, so things have gotten more aggressive. Also, what, that error just means track mode enabled. So it's not really an error, it's just a oh, very yeah. alarming message. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, a car with an exclamation Look point. Look out. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but the power, whoa. It's smooth, it's not fast. No. It's not like plaid, a lot of regen in track mode, really gets that front motor dialed up massively. You can even hear that inverter working under yeah, full regen. High pitch. Mm -hmm. But the drivetrain noise level is very quiet. Yep. The whole car feels so carved of one. It's pretty amazing. And look at the views that we have here. This is home. <laughs> <laughs> we're so lucky to live here. It's incredible. So what I want to do, Jordan, is we're on a relatively smooth road, but I just want to try, I'm hitting as many bumps as I can. I want to try getting it out of track mode now and see if the suspension backs down. So instantly the throttle map changes. And yeah, the suspension definitely backed off. Yeah, even my side could feel that. Yeah, wow. So this is how I would drive it every day. Oh, it actually, I'm sorry, it has a ride and handling uh, there, oh. instantly. Oh. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa, big difference. That's so cool. Big difference. 
Yeah. So I would just keep it in comfort all the time. Exactly. Why do you Why do you need firm suspension? I like a soft car anyway. It keeps the tire on the ground, lets the car work a bit. Uh, and then on track, when you're on a really smooth surface, you know, it'll it'll turn up the damper if you need it to. I just kind of wish there was three settings there. Just let me dial it in just a tiny bit more. The one thing with Tesla is you can never do navigation in track mode, which like you probably shouldn't <laughs> be using track mode on the street. Yeah. But I had my Cybertruck, by the way, I just want a little note. Uh, Cy Tesla fixed most of my handling issues with the Cybertruck. Um, with the new Baja mode and yeah. the new off-road app so you can keep the suspension low. Dude, I was just like everywhere, slight <laughs> oversteer. We had like four people in the car and a dog and we we're just like, Aah! it was awesome. Nice. I was like, damn. And this feels slow compared to my Cyber Beast. <laughs> and Baja mode works fine on this pavement too, so. Yeah, I mean, it says don't do it or whatever, yeah. but it's just like the rear motors were working on that with thing. like guidelines. Back to the Model 3 performance. This is how people are gonna drive the car most of the time. Autopilot on cruising this is it's, how andreas will drive it <laughs> it's so quiet yep it's not e-tron quiet it's not maybe but, even cybertruck quiet but it's refined for a tesla compared to the last model 3 night and day yep the Omo, if you care about like just ride quality and noise that's reason enough to upgrade then you get the big motor then you get the improved thermal performance that this will allow which is something we're not able to test today yep and then you get the increased styling, you get the sound system, which we figured out a way to dial it in so it's not as boomy, um, which is basically bass up, sub down. Right. And that seems to sound pretty good. It's the hack on the Cybertruck too. Yep, worked on the Cybertruck very well. Because the Cybertruck was like great and then got fatiguing yeah. with the boominess. And then you dialed in a little bit less bass than I would like, but I messed with it. I was impressed with the base model sound system, but the back seat's where that really falls apart. There's, in this car, you mean? Yeah. In the, in the LFP? Base, yeah. yeah, LFP. I still think that's the way to go. I, I know I Andreas do. disagrees with me, but I think you go base or performance. I disagree with Andreas. I think it's a great way to <laughs> we could just compare them. Yeah. So base or performance is definitely the move here. And, you know, in, in how you're going to use the performance most of the time, it's just so nice to have, you know, the suspension back down into comfort, this really good noise performance and the power. It's just there. <laughs> you know, it's it's not crazy power, but it sustains, which is cool. So I just feel like the same G load. Yeah, dude, when you really get on the power and stay in it, yep. it just pulls to triple digits. Yep. Allegedly. You it's don't great. need you don't need any more than this. I'm very spoiled with the plaid <laughs> and with the Cybertruck. And this is not a straight line car. And that is where both of those vehicles sort of fall apart, especially the Model S. The Model S Plaid is amazing. It's a muscle car, but I had to upgrade the brakes, which this has much better braking feel than my Model S has. And I had to I have parts for it, but I have to upgrade the suspension, a bunch of other stuff to make it drive cohesively. Uh, just in the initial feeling of this car, it's like, damn, the chassis seems good. This and, is just set up from the factory. I mean, a lot of people get the old Model 3 and yeah. then do some modifications, but what I'm purposefully hitting every right. possible bump, <laughs> and it's incredible. It's so good, so comfortable. I'm Don't curious. you live right there? Uh, right, right, right over there. Oh, right over yeah. here. Okay. <laughs> I should just uh, stay on the corner over here for you to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could have picked you up. <laughs> yeah, this is great. We're gonna be pushing time, but yeah, we got to get to Canyon really quick. Which is there? That's my canyon. Okay. And that's my road. <laughs> so let's just go hit a canyon as quickly as possible. Right. And we'll meet the viewers there. Jordan, I definitely feel like Tesla could have had the opportunity to do something crazy with this car. And I still think there's room for a ludicrous Model 3 above the performance. Um, the reason I say that is this is incredibly well-priced. Yep. It's priced so similarly to the dual motor that with the tax credit, it's cheaper. Uh, but I'm still feeling like just slop and this sort of bushing and this compliance in the suspension that leads to a fantastic daily driving experience but may initially take some of that performance edge yeah. off. And that's always a balance. And that's where I think, you know, the Germans certainly can do special editions. Think M3 CS, think AMG C63 S, and some other things that they have the ability to do. I feel like Tesla could do a hardcore version. But even if they don't, the aftermarket support for this car, you can go for all, you know, complete solid bearings everywhere. You don't need all this rubber in the suspension, all this compliance. Um, the, the aftermarket can solve a lot of it. Dialing the damper up helps for sure, especially in track mode. 
Um, but I know the real hardcore track guys, there will need to be upgrades. And even like compared to that Polestar 2 performance that just drove, that car has a hardcore suspension on yeah. it. That's almost no compromise. Like you have adjustments, you have to jack the car up. That's cool. This yeah. is not that. So we're on some roads. We're in track mode. Should we play around with this? Let's do it. Okay, let's start having some fun. Wow. The, the capability certainly <laughs> is there. No question, dude. Just the power, the amount of regen that you get when you lift off, really good. And the other thing that no one really talks about the Model 3 with, it's the perfect size and you have the perfect sight lines. I can put my tire right there on that white line. I know exactly where it's going you know, it's immediately. Well, the Cybertruck in that regard. <laughs> yeah, and of course we're not comparing this to, yeah. to the Cybertruck in any way, but it's just, this is where you buy the car for, to enjoy it up in good driving roads and of course, uh, you know, on track. And so here we are just coming through this area. Dude, it's so fast. And the thing, it doesn't beat you up. I can hold it right there on threshold braking. Didn't even get an ABS. Yep. So I love that. They have a, they really have good tuning where I can get the tire, you know, 10% rotation slower than vehicle speed, hold it there. Didn't even feel ABS pulse, never triggered. Oh, that's what Tesla gets so right, is once you get the car into a corner, once you get it leaned over, you can just have so much fun. <laughs> It's incredible. For the passenger too. And I'm glad I have bolstering. Like we've done this in your car a lot and your car just needed. Your yeah, th your the three. seats. Yeah. <laughs> these seats are great, dude. Yeah. I love and they're comfortable. these seats. Some some bolstered seats, you're, they're like, oh, on track, this would be nice. But daily, this sucks. This is not the case. Wow. I am so impressed with <laughs> the car being so compliant and so comfortable and so soft and so docile mm -hmm. on a daily perspective, but being incredibly effective and fast as F, what, you know what I mean? Yeah. On a road like this. <laughs> <laughs> we are literally running out of our time though. Yep. So I think we're even gonna go over our 30 minutes. We Sorry, Tesla. We already, we're right about we're, there. We're right about when we need to bring it back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's make a U-turn and uh, we'll let traffic get ahead a little bit and see if we can have some fun on the on the way down. But can I go here to oversteer and, oh no, see it feels very still traction control-y. Oh, I'm sorry, I have it in reduced. That's why I kept cutting Not traction control. Off. Yeah. Wonderful. So see, they're already solving my problems here. I was like, why is it grabbing brakes? <laughs> my car doesn't grab brakes. <laughs> no, stability assist off. Let's go minimal, because we're on the street. Whoa, dude. You like it, huh? I mean, I just like how it feels light compared to the other electric cars that mm -hmm. we drive. If the motors have not even gotten slightly warm, they're just perfect at the yellow where they started basically. And it's fun, like it's really enjoyable. Yeah, I mean, we've been in heavy Mach-E, heavy I-4. I mean, I-4 is like quote unquote direct competitor and a thousand no. pounds more. Can't even compare them. <laughs> I-4 doesn't even give you power if you have steering lock on. Right. All right, let's go for a cruise, yeah? Let's yeah. have some fun on some roads. Full send. Brake pedal, perfect feel right through here. Amazing, get it right into a corner. Oh yeah, rotation on the way out. Look how effective this is. Standing on the brakes. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> That's the thing, you can go so fast in this car and it doesn't beat you up, it's crazy. And I'm just matted. <laughs> yes. I mean, you'll probably wanna do pads and fluid for brakes. Right. You'll probably wanna go tire, feels very under-tired. I would go, you know, large square setup. The front tires are working hard in this, but they had to get the range numbers. Yep. And I, the other thing we haven't mentioned, this charges better than the all-wheel drive. This has the faster charging battery in it. The L, the, so I forget which one's what. The LG is the bad one, I think. This has the Panasonic? Uh, I need to It has somewhere. a different one. <laughs> the, the commenters will know, but this has the battery you want for fast charging. Oh, it's so easy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. It, and the old car had this character too, but even this just feels more mature, yeah. more sorted. No other electric car drives like this. Yeah. This feels like a feather in comparison to Taycan, 
in comparison to Mach E GT. Can we talk? Yeah, because the embargo lifts tomorrow, right? Uh, yep, you're right. So, yep. um, what else? I four, dude. Not even. <laughs> don't even talk about that car. That's it we, wobbles and does some stupid stuff, and it just that's not a good performance. That's car. what we could do on Mach E GT embargo. Just put this video up talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, we should put this video up instead of Mach E. Yeah, I think so. Uh, oh, this sorry, is, Ford. This, no, this is great. Okay, this is just the car of. I mean, I was already sold based off of the numbers on paper and I'm even more sold now. You can feel it's quite firm over these bumps and stuff. If I just come back here now that we're done performance driving, take it out, put it in soft. That's totally really nice. relaxes. Just road trip this everywhere. That's, so, oh. that's the thing with this car. It is a split character of being unbelievably good for daily driving, very effective on a Canyon, yep. very effective in a Canyon but not as hardcore as I still wish Tesla could go. Yeah. You know they could build a ludicrous plaid, something insane version. they probably of have one, just not for sale yet. I think <laughs> I think Tesla needs to build something crazy. This platform can handle it. Yeah. This car feels so understressed. I really think they will. And they're walking these models out gradually. They didn't do like the Rivian thing where it's like, here's the R2 and the R3 and the R3X all at once. It's like, here's our Model 3 performance. And then we just wait. We need Model 3 <laughs> Ludicrous, hardcore, dialed up, track pack, all the stuff. Yep. And, the, and, and it, even this is amazing. This is what most people should buy, but you and I would be the weird ones that want the crazy one. Yeah. I would road trip the crazy one, which is the weirdest thing. Yeah, that is. Because <laughs> if you do road trips, this is the car. It's the, yeah. This is probably, you know, this will road trip much faster than the Model 3 uh, dual motor. Yep. Even though this has less range, you could put wheels on it. You know, you could put the 19 inch wheels or a set of Martians or something on here. Uh, we have to go back to Tesla Superior. Perfect, easy. Call it. Yeah, we're just gonna have to send it. Good thing we're sending it. <laughs> um, we're not quite double the time, so. But, but I just think, forget the range because uh, this has roughly the same capacity as the dual motor. So right. just get the wheels and then you're there. Um, or, you know, put, I don't know if the 18 arrows will fit on here, but 18 inch Martians will. Yes. And then you have the faster charging battery, which matters more on a road trip than the range. Uh, because even the standard LFP Model 3 in our 10% challenge, road trips, the old Model 3 LFP beat the new long range. Right. It's just a shame how poorly that new long range car charges. Do not buy that car. Andreas. Andreas. <laughs> you either go base LFP <laughs> Model 3 with the efficiency improvements, the new hand cooked tires, that new aero wheel, that seems like the perfect car for 99% of people. Yep. This is good for 0.5% of people who actually need to rip or need all-wheel drive. And then we need the M3 Ludicrous for the other 0.5% that want to send it. <laughs> My ratios are off, but you get the yeah. idea. You're not a math guy, you're a driver. Look ahead, we're cruising at highway speeds. I'm just gonna nail it and see how long it takes to catch up to that Jeep. He's not going slow, by the way. Yeah. He's doing 70, foot down. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> the brakes do feel nice. E-tron, e-tron, Model Y. <laughs> so many EVs around here. Colorado. Colorado. Gotta love it. Holy smokes. Yeah. Check mark, Tesla. Good job. It's, it's exactly what I expected it to be, which is all of the amazing improvements of the Highland, or refresh, or upgraded, I whatever call it's called. Highland. Re-engineered. <laughs> Everyone knows what you mean when you say Highland. Yeah. Who cares if it's correct or not? It's all of that, which I already called this the best car in the world for the money. It's all of that plus track mode, the ability to disable ESP, have the car be unbelievably fast on a back road, or and, and even for drivers that aren't so capable that are building up the confidence to get used to something, this is a car that can grow with you. You can grow into it. There's headroom. There's ways you can back the stability control off. You can change the handling balance. It'll help make you a better driver over time. This is literally the car you could give to a 16 year old that they could start driving with and then they'll eventually become best in class on track. Yeah, unless there, I hope there's a way to password lock track. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> because but you could, you could car, learn to drive on this and then take it to a track when you get better. I think if you're a car enthusiast, this is the perfect car no matter your capability. If you're you know, lucky enough to get this as a high school present all the way to you worked hard your whole life and this is where you're treating yourself, right. the car is perhaps the best 
single vehicle solution for the money. The second would be a Rivian R1T. Two car solution. <laughs> Those are two cars that do everything though, but it is a pretty yeah. damn good two car solution. Yeah. But I just think, just buy this. I mean, this this is so good. It does how, it do, how does it get everything so right? It's got route planning, all the other stuff we've already mentioned. It's got the phone chargers here. Everything feels nice. There's not a rattle in this car, which it, I know it only has 200 miles on it, but that's a big deal for Tesla. They've figured out building cars. And I mean, this is a, you know, a huge improvement over the old three. Okay, I, I, my Cybertruck, they haven't figured out how to oh, build. No, 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 that, that's a, sorry, that's a new car. Yeah. <laughs> they've been building threes for six years. Yeah, they've so got this So now they style. know how to build a three. Yeah. Totally. And that's why now's the time to buy a three, the new one. Yeah, get the get, new three. You get all the improvements. Cooled seats, like, oh my gosh, this is fantastic. Yeah, I got them, <laughs> I got them ripping here, but why doesn't it not show up in this bar? I think I got to hold here, right? And drag it down. Yeah, there the we software. Go. This software. They get software too. <laughs> so good. So I don't, there's so much competition for more money and less appeal. You just described literally every other car on the market. <laughs> literally every other car on the market. How could you buy a BMW M3 over this? Now I get that S58 motor is cool and you know if you want to fart shift and have a burble tune and be obnoxious, I like all that stuff too. That car feels more substantial than this car. They're right. bigger. They have you know lock mechanical differentials with limited slip in the rear. It's definitely you're getting a lot for your money. You get even cooler seats with carbon if you want to spec them. Like there is an air of specialness to the combustion equivalents. But Jordan, they cost almost twice as much as this. <laughs> Which is crazy. It's this crazy. is the bargain car, the bargain of the century in some ways. It's, it's like if you have every car on the planet in your collection, you still need one of these because it's so impressive how it does everything. Yeah. And I was kind of giving it crap for being a little bit soft and wallowy like this, like this is all just mashed potatoes. But well, on the Canyon, it didn't it bother didn't me. didn't hurt. And I only hit four corners, but still. Didn't really hurt your performance. Yeah, it'd be great to get this out on track for real. But... Wouldn't it be so much easier to be Tesla haters and just ignore <laughs> this car like most journalists and well, never what, drive it or review it? That's what they do, yeah. They just won't ever, no auto journalist will go out of their way to try and test drive this. Yep. They should, <laughs> everyone needs to drive this car whether you're a journalist or the public like just go drive one just so you have a baseline for something it's the if, value. You're about to, if you're about to go buy the new prius for 40 grand oh my god so just, this is <laughs> this is fifty four thousand. right you get a five thousand dollar state credit in colorado yep. i know that's not a, applicable to everyone then you also get a seventy five hundred dollar credit so that's twelve five off of this which brings it down to like 40 low 40s which is crazy. Dude, I'm almost ready to trade my Cybertruck in on this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we've already done the Cybertruck videos. What more is there to do? I can't sell it privately because they'll sue me. Oh, there's off-roading. There's full self-driving and autopilot. That I went to there's... go take it off-roading today, but the trail was closed. There's things to do with yeah, it. Yeah, all right. We're going to keep it. But, but there's still, things to do with this, too. Everyone's going to be like, Kyle, are you going to trade your old Model 3 in on the new one? No. I, I almost feel like we've done everything with Plaid. Yeah, the Plaid needs to go. And this is like the new... The problem with the Plaid is it's worth that much money. Is it worth I bought it is? at the peak. <laughs> I paid 145 150 for it, oh something like gosh, that with yeah. tax. And now it's worth 50 Yeah. Five? It is if crazy. someone can hit me with a good number on the Model S Plaid, I will sell you our car. It's nice. It's only got 25,000 miles. Yeah. But I'd rather have this than a Plaid all day long. Yeah. If I could swap my Plaid for this, I'm in. I mean, you probably could. Yeah, sure. This is great. Too many car deals at once, though. I got other stuff <laughs> we're working on, too. <laughs> and, like, here we go. Just... I Dude. mean, it's got some body roll, but still so planted. You could just... <laughs> I don't you're, even know what to you're say. You're speechless. <laughs> I mean, you could just go so fast everywhere. <laughs> well, Andreas said he didn't want to buy this one because he would end up in jail. <laughs> I don't like it without track mode. You have to have track mode yeah. on. And this is like a section like that is where I want a button to go. Boom. Yeah. Track mode. Rip it. Endanger the public. Back to normal driving. <laughs> don't drive fast on the street. If we had the opportunity to do this review on the track, we would have. If and Tesla would just be like other companies and let us do things. It'd be amazing. Yeah. Oh, well. Big shout out to uh, Tesla Superior for the extra 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> if I order one, maybe they won't be mad. Right. They get back, they're like, listen, sorry, I got cash in hand. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> cash talks around here. <laughs> this is Colorado. All right, let's go end this video. Holy smokes, Jordan, this is, this yeah. is the one car to do it all. Right.
Wow, Kyle, you parked it right where you did the intro. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. So we've just finished up the drive in the new Model 3 Performance. And Jordan, I'd love to hear your thoughts before I share mine. Uh, just extremely comfortable and sporty, which is hard for many cars to do both. It's usually one or the other. It's a sliding scale, kind of like the track mode handling thing. Oh, that's uh, a good analogy. But it, it just, if you really do need one car, this is what I feel like is the right move. The one thing I noticed is we never showed anyone around back in this video. So we should probably do that. New taillights. <laughs> I've already taken everyone on a full tour. This thing looks incredible back here. This diffuser, this spoiler, which still lifts a little bit on the side. Yeah. Well, the really lame plaid for reference right here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, come on. The plaid's still cool. Plaid is still, that's like the most American muscle car for right. whatever this thing is. 85 grand. It's got a thousand horsepower, but this is the one you want. If you're a driver, don't yeah. go, don't even consider the Model S. This is the one you want. My impression driving it matches yours, Jordan. It is as comfortable as a daily driver as the other Model 3s, in my impression. Andreas disagrees with me. He thinks it's slightly firmer. Yes. Um, but I would say a lot of that probably comes down to the tire. And if you were to put the smaller wheels on here with a little bit fatter rubber, maybe run slightly lower pressures, I, I think, especially in the context of the old Model 3 that we always complained about the ride quality on, and most of our viewers seem to be okay with it, everyone's gonna love this car from a ride and daily perspective. In traffic, you can spot any gap and just whoop, rock there, rock there, find a corner, cut, rip it around a little bit. It's got all of the silent, subdued performance that you want. And when you know you're gonna be driving hard, whether it's on track or on a canyon, you can dial this thing into track mode like you saw, and you have, honestly, pr really good brake pedal feel from my perspective uh, in this car. You also have the ability to back the stability control off, which is wonderful. You can go reduced, minimal, or full off. Again, we didn't try full off today because it was just an initial taste on a back road, but we will get it on track as soon as possible. My friend Brandon uh, is getting a new Model 3 Performance, and I said, hey, we just need it for the first couple weeks. I'll give you a fresh set of tires when we're done. And he said, go send it, go full rip, do whatever you need to do with it. So many videos coming as soon as that car comes in uh, here in Colorado. Track days to come, comparisons to the old Model 3. You know it's not going to end here from our coverage on this car. And like I said, I still think there's room from a performance standpoint for that ludicrous, for something, the M3 CS, if you will. Let's go full send. I'd love to see what Tesla factory can do to dial this up rather than just leaving it to the aftermarket. I'd love to see the actual factory get involved and play in the performance game even harder. But for the money, 54 grand, I mean, I'm sure the pricing will change over time into the future. They've already raised the price due to huge demand initially on this car. It is the clear choice if you're looking for an electric car and you have some driving enthusiasm in you. Or honestly, even if you need all-wheel drive and qualify for the tax credit, just go for this because it's cheaper than the dual motor. <laughs> it's insane, totally insane what's happening right now. And they have nailed the car. For the intended use case of probably 90% street, 10% performance, this fits into that category perfectly. Can't wait to drive one with some upgrades, maybe some mountain pass performance stuff, some unplugged performance stuff on one of these. Get one really dialed up. That should be really fun. And I think we will see these on every corner, absolutely everywhere. And there's good reason for it. So thanks so much for watching another out of spec reviews video. I have been blown away. I came in with very high expectations and they have not only been met, but exceeded. And I got to go think about ordering one of these for myself. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.